The Word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 9. Solomon is speaking and he's praying to God, Give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may be able to discern between good and evil. This is the Word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever had a situation in your life where you faced a big challenge and you were afraid and you weren't sure of what to do? If you've ever had that in your life, then the Word of God before us today is for you. I read about a young man named Alex Honnold who is famous for doing these free solo rock climbing adventures. Back in September of 2008, Alex was climbing the Half Dome Rock Wall in Yosemite National Park. Now, this Half Dome Rock Wall is a 2,000 feet climb that's with a sheer cliff. Where you, you can, I mean, you can hardly see it straight up and down. Well, it's dangerous if you did that climb with ropes and harnesses. But Alex did that free, without any of that, climbing up this sheer face on his own. Well, this half dome rock, it has a ledge about 1,800 feet up. It's called the Thank God Ledge. And on this ledge, you can get a little foothold and you can rest a few moments before you got to go the last 200 feet. Well, Alex got up to the thank God ledge and he just froze. He looked down, he looked up, he became so afraid he didn't know what to do next. Alex prayed to God for help. And within five minutes, Alex got his composure and he was able to finish his climb up the last 200 feet. Wow, what a climb. Now, can you imagine making a climb like that? I don't know about you, but I know that I would certainly be afraid, like Alex was, to make that kind of a climb. Well, the Word of God before us today is about a young king named Solomon who was afraid he was afraid because he was being asked to be the next king of Israel. You see, Solomon was the youngest son of David who was the previous king of Israel. And scholars tell us that Solomon was probably around 20 years old when he became king of Israel. Now, Solomon, he had power, he had authority, he had all kinds of servants around him, but he still was afraid, he didn't know how he was going to lead those people. And so he prayed to God for help. And God answered his prayer by giving him the wisdom to be able to lead the people of Israel. Now we can learn some things from this event in Solomon's life here today. First of all, we learn that our inadequacy can be God's opportunity to be able to work through us. That's really tough for a lot of people today. Because a lot of people today, they just want to do their own thing. A lot of people today don't want anyone to help them with their lives. They want to do it all by themselves. Well, we see here with Solomon how God can work through average people who will put their trust in God's power to help them. Now, Pastor Jim Simbala from the Brooklyn Tabernacle tells about a time in his ministry. It was about two, two years when he was really depressed. He was exhausted and he was thinking about quitting as a pastor. The number of people coming to worship in church was dropping. The church had some big financial problems. And Jim, he, he wondered if God was even at work in the church anymore. 
Well, at a worship service, it was time for Jim to get up to do the message, do the sermon. And Jim couldn't do it. He just was too depressed. And he told the members that he was too exhausted to preach that day. So he told the members, he said, I, I invite you to come up to the Lord's altar and I invite you to pray to God to help us. Well, the members did that. They came up to the altar and they prayed. Shortly after that, they noticed God doing some amazing things. More people were coming back to church and the church started growing again. Jim says, that day I discovered a great truth. God is attracted to weakness. God can't resist those who humbly admit how desperately they need him. Our weakness makes room for God's power. I love that. Our weakness makes room for God's power. When Solomon admitted here that he needed God's help to be the king of Israel, God stepped in. And God gave him the wisdom and the power he needed to be the king of the people of Israel. We find this to be true in our lives as well. Because when we have a big challenge in our lives, and when we desperately come to God for help, we too are going to be able to find God's wisdom and God's power to be able to meet our challenge. Secondly, today, we learn that it's impossible to reach our God-given potential without God's guidance. In the book of Genesis in the Bible, the very first book, in chapters 1 and 2, God created human beings in his own image with this close, trusting relationship in him. Now, God gave them, through this close relationship, wisdom. And Adam and Eve had wisdom to know God's will, and they were aligned perfectly with God's will in their lives. It was all perfect until they decided to disobey God, and then things got all messed up. John Collins and Tim Mackey, in their podcast, How to Read the Bible, suggest that Solomon's request here of God is an opportunity to undo the damage that Adam and Eve caused in the Garden of Eden. Solomon asked here for a discerning heart to be able to know the difference between right and wrong. Now, the Hebrew word there for discerning literally means listening. So what Solomon was asking here for, he was asking for a heart that would listen to God and follow God's guidance rather than his own guidance. Solomon was relying on what God wanted for his life. He was asking to see life through God's eyes and to rely on God's power. How different our lives would be if we did that. If we would pray to God for help when we go through a very challenging time, we could rely on God's guidance instead of on our own guidance. And we could look through our life through God's eyes and rely on God's power instead of on our own power. Well, what a difference it could make. Thirdly, today, we learn that our life is not all about us. Our life is really all about God. Our life is about God working through us. Years ago, St. Teresa of Avila traveled throughout Spain starting new monasteries. She brought with her a young woman whose name was Anne of St. Bonaventure. Well, Teresa died. And people asked Anne to take over for her. Now, Anne felt totally unworthy to do that. She felt inadequate. She felt ill-equipped to be able to take over for Teresa. Anne knew she was over her head. And so she prayed to God for help. This is what she prayed. Dear God, I don't know why you're asking this from me. 
I am nothing but straw. And through her prayer, she heard God saying to her, Yes, Anne, but it is through straws like you that I can light my fire. Because we're human, we don't always remember that God can do great things through us. God can use us to make an eternal difference in this world. God can use us to show his power in this world. God wants us to understand that life on this earth isn't just about us. He wants us to know that life on this earth is about him. God wants us to know it's all about Jesus dying on a cross to forgive our sins. Life is all about believing that Jesus rose from the dead to overcome death for us and to give us eternal life in heaven. Life is about sharing this life-changing message of God's love with others around us. In chapter 1 of the book of James in the Bible, James says this, If anyone asks God for wisdom, God will give it to them generously. I believe those words are for you and me here at Messiah today. These words of James are for us. I believe these words of James and this prayer of Solomon is for you and me today because today we had a voters meeting before this service and we asked God for wisdom to make that decision whether to build our life center. We asked God for his power to be able to do that seemingly impossible act. And God answered our prayer. God answered our prayer and promised to give us wisdom and power to be able to build this life center, to be able to lead more people to Jesus and to heaven. I truly believe that God's going to give us this wisdom and power generously. Whenever you have a big challenge like this in your life and you're afraid of what to do next, follow the example of King Solomon today. Follow the advice of James here today. Pray to God for wisdom to make the right decision. You're going to find that God will give you his wisdom generously. You're going to find God will give you his power generously. May God continue to bless you with the wisdom and power of God as you continue to go through the challenges in your life. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.